Don't delay. Buy today. It says power button doesn't work. Let's see if the power button works. Power button. You can tell that they are paranoid. Take note. Okay, nothing from the power button. Let's see from the charger. Well, power supply charger, at least. Okay, so it turns on. Now let's see what happens here. It says... Uh, let's cover the name. Okay, it says 88%, 85% battery. What happens if I hold the power button down? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Doesn't work. All right. Does the caps lock key work? Caps lock key works. Do, uh, let's see. Does the mouse work? Mouse works. Can you type? Let's see. What happens if, oh, fuck. I, I decided to boot into guest mode, and they have secure guest mode enabled. The stream will be over by the time this shit boots. Oh, Jesus Christ. I can't wait for this shit to boot the guest mode. Let me turn it off with the... Wait, no power button. Okay, I'm just going to assume the other keys in the keyboard work, because who the fuck has time to wait for this to boot in a secure mode? Not me. I don't have time for this to boot in a secure mode. Do you? Shit. Agile Therapeutics may actually have a market cap of over 10 million again by the time this thing boots. Now, who am I kidding? All right, so... 820-4924. By the way... Still booting in the guest, secure guest mode. Look at that bar. Still booting. I hate secure guest mode. It's so useless. Whatever you needed a computer for, you could probably compute in your head before that shit boots up. It's the most useless thing I've seen in an Apple product. Okay, so let's check out the schematic and see which one is on off. So on off is going to be pin 5. Again, I don't know if the rest of the keyboard works, and I'm not going to be able to tell for a very long time, so we're just assuming it does. Oh, I wonder if any of those go to pin 5. So, pin five, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have 12.5 millivolts. That doesn't sound right. One, two, three, four, five. Nothing there. Well, where does that go to? That goes to some shit on the other side of the board. Through this little hole over here. And that's broken. All right. So this would explain why the power button doesn't work. Keyboard... Ah, the pin's not even soldered. A lot of these are shittily soldered, but... Yeah, that's, that ain't soldered, bro. What is this? the hell is that? It's junk. So this is going to be like sewing. Sewing is something I've always been bad at. But I'm going to try to get better at this. So see, this is the board. And this is the hole. Now, the way this works is that the keyboard connector is going to be talking to stuff on the other side of the board. So it's going to make its way to the other side of the board through these holes. And I'm going to try to put this through the hole which is something I've been doing a lot less as a single man. So we're going to be taking this little wire, and this is, I think, a 48 or 46 gauge wire, and I'm going to try to get it through the hole, just like threading a needle. There we go. And it goes through. And we pull it through on the other side of the board. Don't you come out. Don't you. There we go. See, that's my wire. <laughs> Beautiful. And we go back in the microscope. Mike Mixtress is a shortage of holes to thread story of my life. Indeed, my friend. Indeed. So we go over here. We add a little bit of flux. Just one millipole. One micropole. 
And first thing to do is let's solder that pin to the board healthily. Let's make that a happy little pin. That is not a happy little pin as it stands right now. What do we say we turn that into a happy little pin? Now, technically, I don't really have to care that much if this pin is soldered to the board because I'm running a wire. So I might as well just run the wire all the way and not be lazy with it. And that's exactly what I think I'm going to do. So here we go. Tin the wire a little bit. When I say tin, I mean melting away, burning away at the, at the insulation. This is, um, this is enameled magnet wire. So it's going to have some insulation there, and we're just going to burn that away. And crap, I keep touching the other side of the wire, which I want to remain enameled. Let's try this again but without being an idiot. It's really hard to not be an idiot when you're me. You have no idea. Okay, so we got a little jumper there. Just gonna Get that up close and personal. Now go to the other side of the board, tug at it a little bit, get under the microscope, and here we go. Sewing with MacBooks. Now we're just going to fill that hole on the other side of the board. Oh, before we're just going to put some liquid there before we fill the hole. Touch my iron around that liquid before we get in the hole, and there we go. Just gonna rub it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And there we go. And that's the resistor it's supposed to be making contact with. So let's see if it's making contact with that resistor. Beeping mode. Okay, let's see if it beeps here. Did I not put the wire all the way through enough? It works. It beeps. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the next one. Mm. Let's go ahead and fill this other hole. The pad under it is probably going to be corroded. And the only way to really fix that would be to replace the connector. But remember, I don't really care about the pad. Because I'm going to be soldering a jumper anyway. So I'm just going to tin the pin of the connector as much as I can. And then run my jumper wire. Okay. We're going to take more jumper wire and send it through the board. So this is my jumper. And we have to poke it through that hole which is now unfortunately covered with flux. And unfortunately when the hole is covered in liquid it's actually harder to penetrate it, not easier. In spite of what common sense and experience might tell you. See? Doesn't want to go through. So we're going to use tweezers to help that Penetrate. Come on, penetrate. Uh, there we go. Penetrated. It's a happy little hole. Okay. Now we turn the board around. We pull this up. As you can see, it's gone through the other side. And unfortunately, according to what everybody said, it appears that we've penetrated the wrong hole. Gee. 
No wonder I'm single. All right, let's try this again. That was indeed the wrong hole. I've heard that before. Okay, so let's go through here and put it into the right hole. I'm sorry. I think it's standard to apologize when you do that, right? You get another wire. That one's not straight anymore. Mm -hmm. Wow, it really doesn't want to go in this one. Come on. Come on. Take my piece. Damn it. It doesn't, it doesn't want to take my piece. Where does it? Ah, oh, yeah, here it is. It's still here. Come on, take it. There we go. All right, did it come out the other end? That's one thing you always want to check for when you're... to make sure you got the right hole. Make sure it comes out the other end. And I do see wire on the other end. So it did come out the other end. Beautiful. That's the wire from the other end. Okay. Now I'll go back to the microscope. My piece is so small, I can only see it inside the microscope. So we're going to run it to this pin. Remember, I'm not going to run it to the trace because the trace itself is kind of funky looking. All right, that's a really nice solder joint I got there. That's going over the whole side of the connector. So now we have to solder the wire on the other side of the board. We already poked through the hole so that it's stuck in that hole forever. So we already have flux on this side of the board. All that's left is to do our soldering. I'm just going to scrape some of the excess off of here. Okay, get rid of the excess wire. Okay, let's see if we got a working power button. Can't donate bits? What's a bit? I'm not going to reassemble the whole thing. I'm just going to see if the power button works. All I need for that is a screen, really. So screen plus keyboard. Oh, and battery. Duh. Dumbass. I'm such an idiot. Turn on, you bastard. Did I hit the power button? I hope I didn't hit it twice. That would be stupid. Hey, Apple logo! So that's that. Power button works. Now we might as well go over the little lesson. So W, keyboard, on, off, L. Keyboard, K, KBD keyboard, on, off, 
Turn it on or off, power button, underscore L, meaning when that signal is low, assume that we're hitting the power button. So the power button is going to pull that signal low. R4810 attaches that to SMC on off L. SMC on off L is a signal that is going to be pulled up by R5170 that goes to the SMC. This is going to go to the S uh, system management controller. So when the system management controller sees that signal duck down for a, a quarter of a second, it's going to assume you hit the power button. It's pulled up by R5170, which uses PP3V3S5 SMC, a power rail that's almost always going to be there, to pull that up and keep it there. And when you hit the power button, you are lowering that a little bit. So that's how we fix a power button that's not working, and that's also how we thread a MacBook. I hope you learned a little bit of sewing today, and with that, we move on to the next board. Ah. Don't delay. Bye today.